nano. Thousand times a thousand. One million. You said time, sorry. Times. You multiplied it, okay? So, <laughs> and then uh, this is 1,000 times bigger than this, is 1,000 times bigger than this, and then this is actually 1 million times bigger than this, okay? So, you keep multiplying every time you move up and down a uh, scale, okay? So, so, if you mix up the letter M versus letter N, you're making a million times mistakes, okay? So, this is uh, completely unacceptable. It's not a spelling error, okay? So, uh, and then uh, you need to know very clearly which prefix you are talking about, okay? So, uh, uh, unfortunately, to learn it in America, you probably have learned it in high school, but you don't use it every day in America. This is in all metric countries, people know these units um, very well, okay? So, in scientific language, you're only allowed to publish in metric units, okay? So, in any scientific publications. All right, so uh, milli, micro, and nano, okay? So you should not confuse that. Now, these big prefixes are also very useful. Kilo, mega, giga, and peta. These are units bigger than one. So kilo, you're probably familiar with. One K means 1,000, okay? So mega is 1 million, okay, 10 power 6. Giga is uh, 1 billion, and then peta is 1 trillion, okay? So 10 power 12, okay? So uh, you hear these terms in computer language all the time, okay? So, uh, um, when we are talking about, uh, you probably don't hear kilo anymore because it's so, uh, so, uh, so outdated, okay? So, uh, and then uh, you, you start with meg these days, okay? So each photo that you snap is approximately 5 megabytes, okay? So they snap on an iPhone, actually you can go up to 12 megabytes right now. Some photos, some, 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 Phones up makes up to 20 megabytes photo. Okay, so each photo can be 20 megabytes, and then gigabyte is actually a thousand times bigger than a mega. Okay, so uh, uh, most of the time the hard drives that you uh, that you look at. Okay, so it's like 500 gig is kind of minimum. Uh, you usually start with 1,000 gig these days, at least one tera. Okay, so uh, sorry, uh, this is actually, no, this is the wrong. This is only tera. Okay, sorry, actually I made the wrong thing. This is tera. And then uh, T, 10 to 12. Sorry, I made a very bad mistake. Here. And then Peta is the <coughs> biggest one, okay? P, that is the Peta is actually the bigger one. Uh, uh, 10 to the power 15. All right, A, sorry about that. I just edited these slides and I actually made a bad mistake. <laughs> so, uh, uh, one. Zero 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 zero
1.44 megabytes, okay? So each floppy disk, they used to hold a whole game. You used to be able to go take a floppy disk and then copy a game from your friend and take it back to your home computer and play a whole game with 1.44 megabytes, okay? But now, it, now it's like 1 20th of a photo, okay? You can't even, one photo and you snap on your iPhone, it's 20 megabytes these days, okay? So you can see how much more demanding the memory has been, okay? So. And uh, uh, like the PowerPoints that I made are actually 100 megabytes each, okay, for each chapter, okay. So the videos that I upload are actually every 20 minutes video is one gigabyte, okay. So it's like you know it's like a lot more <laughs> demanding right now, okay. So yeah, so uh, yeah, so but terror now most hard drives have a terror, okay. I have one terabyte at home, okay. So if you have a 500 gigabyte hard drive, it's like very small these days, okay. So. But, uh, just not that many years ago, okay? So it used to be mega. Now it's like giga, now it's like terror, okay? Pretty soon we're gonna go to Penta, okay? So I'm pretty soon. <laughs> and it keeps going like that, okay? So pretty pretty soon we're gonna, you will already see big servers uh, in measure in terms of petabytes, okay? So pretty soon we're going to maybe ordinary computer will do that. All right, so those are the metric unit measurements, okay? So let's go. All right, so now I do have one interesting question for you, okay? Now, the reason why we use metric is that uh, metric is usually universally convertible, okay? So uh, this question I will actually put in the exam, okay? So uh, if a bacterium is one micrometer in diameter, how many bacteria needed to circle around the Earth, okay? So now once again, the uh, diameter of the Earth is 40,000 kilometer, 40,000 kilo km that converts to 40,000 times 10 to the power 3, and then we need to put the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 0, up here, so that becomes 4 times 10 to the power 7. All right, the diameter of a bacterium is 1 micrometer, that's 1 times 10 to the power minus 6, okay? Now, when you just do a division, you should remember how to do that too, that should be covered in uh, <laughs> one of those, whatever those maps. Okay, so 4 times 10 to the power 7 divided by 1 times 10 to the power minus 6. Alright, so 4 for 1 will be 4, and then that becomes 10 to the power 7 minus minus 6. 2 minus becomes a plus, 4 times 10 to the power 13. Okay, so that's 40 trillion. Okay, so and uh, now you can see the merits of using a metric system because our number, our numeric base, okay. So uh, you can compare something that is as big as the diameter of the Earth to the size of the bacterium, okay? You can do a precise comparison by just doing a simple division that way, okay? So if I give you the diameter of the Earth in miles and I give you the diameter of the bacteria in inches, like, you can't make that comparison, okay? Because you, you, you can't do a division, okay? So you have to do some complicated conversions before you can uh, you have to convert both units to metric, actually, and then you can do a comparison, okay? So, this is why uh, 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 science like to use metric, okay? Because it is our numeric system at 10 base. If you compare something big to come something very small, you just do a simple division, okay? So, and it always works in metric, okay? So it won't. You. And uh, oh. like even converting between inches and feet, you have to do a 12, okay? So one inch is about 2.54 centimeters, or so 25.4 millimeters. One meter is about 3.2808 feet, okay? One mile is approximately 1.609 kilometers, okay? So uh, even Canada uses metric, okay? So if you go to Canada, everything is in kilometers, yes? Well, we have to do the conversions between micrometer mm, and micrometer. Uh, not really, you do have to answer this question, okay? So yeah, this question you do have to answer. Okay. These are some basic conversions. Now you do need to know centimeters versus millimeters. I have a lot of students con confusing between centimeters and millimeters. One centimeter is 10 millimeters, okay? So you do need to need to know that, okay? One centimeter is 10 millimeters. And then, because uh, when we are measuring things, the centimeter on your ruler, all right? So you actually, when you write it out, the answer, typically you have to express it in millimeters, okay? Even when you measure in centimeters, centimeter is not considered a standard metric unit. You need to uh, convert it back to millimeters, okay? So if you measure something that is 1.4 centimeters, you actually have to write 14, mm 14 millimeters. And so uh, you do have to uh, definitely remember, definitely remember that, okay? So 
And you do have to remember a milli is 1,000 times smaller than a micro, a micro is 1,000 times smaller than a nano. Okay, so I just put down all these conversion reference for you. Okay, so. Right, but you do have to answer this question. Okay, so I will have a section, I will have a written uh, question at the end. Okay, so ask me this. Okay, so I'll show you the steps here. Okay, so. Just to encourage you to learn metric. Okay, so. All right, so now actually we are done with metric, but let's put something uh, into the perspective of different sizes, okay? So, uh, you know, kilometers, meters, uh, centimeters, something we use. We rarely use decimeter, but the, the unit exists. Centimeter, millimeters, we use. Micrometer is this mu symbol, it's not too little m. Nanometers, okay? This, and then, uh, all right, so now let's actually put everything into perspective, okay? So uh, your naked eye can see something down to about uh, a tenth of a millimeter, 100 or 100 micrometer, as your naked eye can see. That's uh, one millimeter is what you can see in your ruler, that's little, uh, and a tenth of that distance. Uh, is what your um, naked eyes can see, about uh, 100 micrometer. Below that, we need to use microscopes, okay? So uh, when we use microscope, you can magnify things up to about 1,000 times. You can see something down to 200 nanometer, okay? So uh, that's the uh, lowest, uh, smallest size that you can see. Even, uh, even less than a micrometer is very small in your light microscope. Okay, so we look at the conversion yesterday. We look at the, uh, most of most most we look at blood yesterday, and uh, that red blood cell that you look at under the microscope is about ten micrometer. Okay, so today we're going to make some yeast. They are a little bit smaller. They will be about five micrometer, and then next week we're going to stain bacteria. They are down to one micrometer. Okay, so uh, some of you did look at some bacteria yesterday. Uh, they are much smaller. They are about one micrometer range. Okay. Uh, so you do need to know uh, the perspective size, okay? So I, uh, I do have a question asking you, what's the approximate size of E. coli? That's about two micrometers, okay? So, and then uh, uh, red blood cells, uh, eukaryotic cells are usually bigger. Eukaryotic cells are bigger, like uh, they are like 10 to 12 micrometer, right? So, so anything below 0 0.2 micrometer or 200 nanometer, you actually cannot see with a light microscope. You need the electron microscope to see, okay? When we explain the electron microscope in just and then, uh, and then anything smaller than that, these, uh, uh, anything smaller than a uh, tenth of a nanometer is actually, uh, you need a, a special microscope to look at the uh, Armstrong's, to look at the atom size, okay? So. All right, so this is our light microscope. We already played with it yesterday, so uh, we will be playing with it again today. So uh, to, we have these four objectives, so we, you just multiply the two uh, uh, power together the scanning uh, the the uh, the ocular or the eyepiece times the objective. Okay, we do have these four objectives: four times four, ten, forty, one hundred. We went through all of that yesterday. Uh, but remember, there's a ten x eyepiece on top. So the total magnification, you just multiply them. Okay. So when we do the all immersion with hundred x, with the ten x of uh, eyepiece, you get a thousand times over magnification. That's about uh, the best that you can do with our light microscope. Okay. So. Uh, now, because there's actually no point magnifying it further because uh, you will lose resolution, okay? So, uh, this is because light, okay, the wavelength of light is about 400 nanometer. So, if you are smaller than this distance, 200 nanometer or 0 0.2 micrometer, you will lose resolution. There's no point keep magnifying, but you're not going to get any more resolution, or you're not going to get any more details, okay? So, uh, uh, you can put a 100x eyepiece on top too, but there's no point, okay? You're just going to get a blurry image, okay? not going to see any more details okay so this is because light microscope whatever kind of light microscope the maximum resolution is about 200 nanometer even with that it's very blurry okay so you're not going to see any more details so to see more details you actually uh, now this actually explains uh, um, oil immersion actually so this is why we needed to oil immersion so I didn't have time to explain that yesterday why we need to use oil uh, some of you did ask me, oh, they're always touching the lens, that's the whole point. All right, so this is because there is this phenomenon called the uh, refraction. Light would actually bend, all right, when uh, it leaves a more dense media like glass, okay, com uh, compared to air, okay. So now the, if you do not use oil, you can see here the beam of light uh, leaving the glass would actually bend away from the uh, uh, center 
Okay, so uh, uh, light heating, light light hitting uh, the barrier at an angle would actually bend away right, from uh, the from the uh, center. It would actually this is called a refraction. Right, so light actually sp uh, bends when it changes uh, speed actually from a uh, more dense media like glass to a less dense media like air. The reason why we need oil is that uh, the oil with the same optical density uh, compared with the glass, okay, or same refractive index with the glass, and then light actually won't bend, okay. So you can you can try without adding oil, you're never going to focus with analytics, okay. It's like you may get a very blurry image. Without the oil, you are not going to get a uh, decent image, okay, with a 100x objective. Uh, some of you yesterday had a lot of, there's a lot of air bubble inside the oil that also interferes with the, uh, 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 with the uh, quality of the oil, okay? So the air, um, you may want, if you see a lot of uh, air bubble trapped in the uh, oil, you may want to just let it drop out and then you want to, you want to oil, you want to drop of oil that doesn't contain any air, okay? So this is why we need to use uh, uh, oil immersion. So, uh, yeah, so I have a little bit of physics explanation. You don't need to know this, but I just put in some extra reference why light actually bends, okay? So, uh, if you go from a more dense media to a less dense media, like uh, dense optical media like glass to air, light actually bends away, okay? The, the angle actually bends away, right? So, uh, now once it's reached a critical angle, light actually won't even come up, so, okay? So, you see here, if you if the light actually hits it hits the barrier at a shallow angle, it will actually be reflected back called total internal reflection. Okay, so the light bending is called refraction, and when it hits when it when the angle is too shallow, it's actually like uh, you see here when the light hitting at a shallow angle, it actually won't even come out. It would actually bounce back. Okay, this is called total internal reflection. Okay, so uh, now I put a little extra. Interesting information. Total internal reflection is what optical fiber is about. Okay, so if you, uh, the modern day communication network is all about, uh, is all about light. Optical fiber actually is made of glass. It's a glass tube that conducts light. Okay, so optical fiber uses uh, the phenomenon of total internal reflection. Uh, you actually won't have any data loss. Okay, so even uh, when you spread an optical fiber from from United States all the way going across to uh, China, <laughs> then uh, there's actually almost there's actually almost no data loss. Okay, so you can actually just transmit a beam of light like that. Okay, so uh, this is the world's optical fiber network. Right? Did you know the whole world is actually linked up with optical fiber network? You may think your internet is wireless. We use Wi-Fi, but it's actually local. But the the internet infrastructure is actually optical fibers going across ocean. Right, people have actually laid down all these optical fiber across the ocean, and then uh, there's there are a lot of physical fibers that are laid down at the bottom of the ocean to go across the ocean like that. Okay, so uh, uh, yeah, to actually link up the whole world, the whole world is actually optical fiber linked. Okay, so, so that was easy for like people hack into different systems. Yeah, the whole world is connected. The entire world is connected. It doesn't matter where you are. <laughs> the speed of light is very, very fast. It, the, speed of, the speed of light goes around the world seven times per second. So, uh, and then you, uh, even when you're streaming a video from China, you're getting a very little, you know, very little delay. Okay, if your optical fiber network is good. Okay, so does anybody have a uh, files fiber going all the way to the homes? Files. That's an optical fiber directly going into your home. Okay, so now locally we use Wi-Fi. Okay, that's just a that's a uh, that's a radio wave signal, okay, so, but the bulk of the internet is actually connected via optical fiber, okay, so uh, the reason why we get, you can stream a, um, a high resolution image from Japan is because there are optical fibers going all over the world, okay, and uh, people have actually be, have been building these infrastructure for a very, very long time, okay, so uh, the first cable that was laid down by the British Empire that was actually 1865. The first uh, cable was actually laid all the way from England to Adelaide in Australia. That was actually done in 1865, and then uh, that, that that was that was an optical fiber then. It was it was copper wire then. Okay, so but uh, I went to Australia last year and I was looking at the cable relay station. And then, so the, the 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 primitive internet structure, like with the cable, 
people had already done that in 1865. I was like, I was like, oh, I didn't know that. People have actually put down a cable across the, from England to Australia in 1865. Okay, so like, and then uh, now we have a lot of fiber 